Maybe you're a musician in a band and you and your friends have a couple of songs that you're ready to bring to life in a recording. You know, you've played them a couple of times, you, you know how it's supposed to feel, you know the arrangements, it's just that next step. Or maybe you're a hip hop artist who wants to record some raps over a, a few beats, you know, it, it doesn't really matter. And before you go and spend $500 on a new computer and $200 on a new interface and then $600 on Pro Tools or whatever DAW you want, uh, I recommend starting with investing in a multi-track recording console. All right, so I know what you're thinking, which is Chris, what in the F does multi-track recording mean? Like, what is that at all? So I went ahead and actually printed out the definition so I could read it to you guys. Uh, all right, so multi-track recording is also known as multi-tracking, double-tracking, or tracking. It's a method of sound recording developed in 1955 that allows for separate recording of multiple sound sources or of sound sources recorded at different times to create a cohesive hold. What in the F does that mean? <laughs> all right, so basically... Uh, to simplify it, it's how you're able or how engineers are able to record the drums, right? And somebody goes in and records the drums and they hit stop. And then somebody will then go in and record the bass over the drums, you know, while the drums are playing and then hit stop. So you hear when you play it back, then you hear the drums and the bass, but they were played both at different times. Then you go in later and you add the guitars you add so on and so forth. Before you know it, you've added all the pieces to the puzzle without the whole band having to play at the same time. I don't know if that makes sense or if that just complicates the definition, but anyhow, the real question is what do they look like now? And I'm gonna show you the first console right here. Everybody say hello to the Tazcam Pocket Studio DP8. This is the first baby that I recorded on and uh, it's very easy to use. I'm gonna go over some of the simple functions and how they work. Uh, basically, you get eight tracks here to record whatever audio you want. Um, what's cool is automatically straight from the track, if you want it to come out the left side of your earphones, all you gotta do is turn this knob to the left, and depending on how much you want it to come out of the right, or if you want it to come out centered, you just gotta put it in the direction you want. Fairly, fairly simple. Uh, what's cool is you could actually add reverb straight out the bat, um, which I'll show you in just a second. Um, and you can actually even like change the reverb. There's like different like hall settings, um, room, studio, play, so on and so forth. You can get really technical with it. And like I said, this is all without a computer. Um, what happens is the files are recorded to a SD card. Um, and the SD card, you're able to actually eject from the console here let me give let me show you that real quick so pop this little thing out bang oops there it is two gigabyte bam this is like i think the original one that it <laughs> i was using i don't know if it came with it or not you might want to check that if you don't have one they're fairly cheap best buy um and yeah like i said you can what's cool about this is you could stick it into a computer after so if you do happen to have a computer and you have like pro tools or fruity loops or uh, whatever daw you have you can actually take your files from here and stick them on the computer to edit them uh according to you know whatever effects you want okay so now i'm gonna give you a little walkthrough and show you how fairly easy it is to use this console right here uh first you're gonna start by turning it on Pressing this little button in the left corner, this little animation will come on the screen. All right, and just wait for it to load. All right, so beginning of your song loads up, bang. Next thing you're gonna want to do is you're gonna look to the back of the device, just right here. You've probably been wondering where you plug everything in, bang, right back here. You got two quarter inch uh, cable inputs and you got two XLR inputs um, so if you want to record mics you can do so and if you want to record with guitar or keyboard or whatever you want going into these you can do so too and then you'll just switch whatever you're recording um, on this little switch here so it, it has like a little like automatic input gain kind of setting for you and then what you'll do is this line out right here you can go from RCA into your speakers um, 
or if you have like a stereo or whatever and then right here it's pretty sweet because there's also a little phones jack so if you want to just you know if you only have earphones that's cool too all right so i went ahead and recorded three different tracks for you guys on track one there's guitar track two there's bass and on track three there's drums i'm gonna just give you guys an example real quick of uh what they each individually sound like and then i'll put them all together just to give you that full example of what multi-track recording is let's start with the drums on track three though so what i did is i recorded this and normally to record you would end up you would click this red button and it'll start blinking and then you would hit this button while you would press play and that would go ahead and it would record and i'm not going to do that since i already recorded over so we're just going to hear it so this is what i recorded right now some drums there you go you get the idea all right so then i went ahead and recorded the bass and that sounded something like this all right then i went ahead and recorded the guitars it was something like this Now to give you an idea of what it all sounds like together, it sounds like this. Now if I wanted to add some reverb, just to kind of spice it up. So there you go. That's an example of, you know, that was three tracks right there. Now, what I could have realistically done is kept going. I could have added keyboards on track four. I could have added, you know, whatever I wanted to on five and six. I could have really panned the guitars on the left side. I could have doubled them and recorded another guitar track on, on, on uh, track two and then panned it to the right, did some stereo imaging, but I, I didn't. Obviously, this was just for a quick recording. Um, just to give you guys a full example. Now, uh, what I ended up realizing, the only con with this console was you couldn't record more than two things at the same time. And that could be an issue when you're recording live drums or, you know, you know, if you want to record a whole band at the same time like I was trying to do with my, with my band. Uh, this console... It, it'll be harder to do with that if you can only record up to two things at the same time um, That brings us to our next console, which I'm gonna show you right now All right, say hello to the zoom r16 everybody. I upgraded to this baby a little after uh, a few years messing with the Tascam pocket studio um, As I mentioned before I just needed to upgrade due to the fact that I was tired of recording only two things at the same time um, and I'll show you what I'm talking about on this one and how it gives you more options. Uh, basically, you get eight inputs on the back of this rig. Each are XLR and quarter inch um, adaptability. So you can, you can plug in a mic cable or you can plug in your guitar or keyboard, no problem. Uh, each file is saved onto an SD card, which I'm not going to pop out, but if I push this in right here, it would just, it would pop it out and I'd be able to then stick it into a computer or wherever I'd like to um, grab my files or my sounds from there. Um, which is pretty neat, like I said, if, if you're trying to, uh, if you do have a computer, but maybe it's just not fast enough to record straight into it, but you have a DAW such as Pro Tools or Fruity Loops. Um, this either console you, you you can you can do that with um, So you get eight tracks Along with these other eight tracks, so you get a total of 16 tracks actually and that's pretty neat because Let's say maybe you are recording a, a big piece somewhere, you know, you need 16 different available tracks That's no problem 
you, you, the Zoom R16, it gives you all of that. Plus, you're able to add effects to each track individually. Um, you can also add um, effects to the master, um, such as you know your delay, your compression, your limiting, uh, anything. Uh, 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 well, not anything, but mostly anything <laughs> on this console. Or as opposed to the Tazcam Pocket Studio, you're only able to uh, really mess with reverb. So that was kind of you know not as swifty as you will as uh, the the Zoom R16. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and show you an example of a uh, hip hop track. Um, that I had my friend Paramount record over and uh, Just to give you an example, maybe, maybe like I said, you're a hip-hop artist and you're trying to uh, uh, Record but you don't have enough chips to, to afford a computer, you know, you, you can use this method as well. So here we go. I recorded left right on uh, Tracks one and two and then I have vocals on track three and I'll show you what that sounds like right now. The sun just came up, but yo, it's five o'clock somewhere. Vision impaired, I just spent my bus fare on the potion I sip on. Lady Luck dares me to coast, I'm gone. Whatever she says, as long as it gets me on. One for some reason seems in my teens I could do no wrong. But now I'm writing this song. I was a rugged, mean, mugging young son of a bitch who clipped a motherfucker just for. Okay, so as you can see. Uh, the vocals were recorded on track three, like I mentioned. You're probably wondering how I got the beat onto the Zoom R16. I didn't make the beat from the Zoom R16. This isn't some magical console that can just do everything. Uh, what I did ahead of time is I had my friend Paramount uh, send me the track, actually via email, and all I did was record um, the file onto input one and input two, uh, and I used a RCA cable to to do so uh, basically it was an aux to rca um and that's what made this all possible and then all i did was just i stuck in a mic on you know track three and recorded my friend and to be honest i mean that's that's really all you need if if you're however if you're just recording um you know, if you're recording some freestyles or if you're a hip hop artist, I, I really don't think you probably need the Zoom R16. You can probably go for the Tascam Pocket Studio DP8. I know they make a, I think it's a DP6 or like a DP4 um, that, uh, you know, it has only four or six tracks. And that that's, that's pretty neat too because, you know, maybe you don't even need eight tracks. Maybe you only are trying to record one guitar or you're just trying to record one instrument. Uh, you don't need to go out and 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 purchase uh, a sixteen track console to to record your piece. Anyways, those are two of the many ways you can record your music today. Um, now I just want to mention something. You, I'm not saying that there's a better way to record than another way. You know, I'm not saying there's one way that works and another way doesn't. Um, as cheesy as cheesy as and as corny as it sounds, um, you know, it's it's whatever works best for you. At the end of the day, uh, I mean, for a while, um, I'll try to find some, I'll try to find it later for another video, but I have this laptop that I recorded on and it has a cracked ass screen. Like it's just like the whole screen, there's a long story on how I got cracked and that's like a totally other topic. But um, anyways, I recorded on this laptop and I would plug in the HDMI port to my TV in order to record and that's how I did it for years. Um, and you know, eventually then later I was able to upgrade to a computer and then I was still recording with multi-track consoles, but I was ejecting the files from the SD onto Pro Tools and then I was editing it from there and so on and so forth. And then eventually I was just able to save up for an interface, but I think I'm getting off topic. Uh, if you have any questions, leave, leave them in the comments below. I'd love to hear how you record. Um, I'm always trying to, you know, learn new things myself and I'm sure somebody else out there could possibly learn for what you have to say too. So, um, thank you for checking into the Band in a Bedroom channel. My name's Chris Hallinan and I'll see you next time.